name is Felix Bacon, the Ura Boy from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. So we're uh, a couple of weeks out now, coming up to that. It was a Thursday, so a week and a half out for, no, nearly two weeks. It's Wednesday. So it was uh, a couple of weeks out now from the news that uh, Jodie Whittaker and Christian are leaving Doctor Who. And, and it was news that I would say is reasonably big. I, I in my in my little bubble, uh, my little circle, it was met with just elation, sheer elation and joy. Uh, uh, even though what might come next may be worse, right? Maybe worse. But uh, who, whose channel was it? Uh, Facebook. I was listening to Facebook last night bef before my live stream, and it had who was it? Cybernite. Say, listen, it can't get worse. I really, it got to a point where I hate it, right? I absolutely hate it, and I don't think of it as Doctor Who. So, again, like, whatever they do, I mean, like, I don't care. I mean, like, for me, <coughs> the more not Doctor Who they make it, the, the happier I am now. I mean, it, I feel validated by it. So, it, can't, it really, I, like, whatever they do, it can't get worse. It can't get worse, I'm telling, unless I'm, like, strapped to a chair, clockwork orange-like, you know, made with my eyes full soap and made to watch it. Um, which I think is about the only way they're going to get many uh, 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 many viewers mo uh, moving forward. But, uh, um, yeah, so it, we, we had, like, this massive glut of uh, news articles coming out. They're like, huge, and they're, most of them, hilarious, absolutely hilarious. That's that's easing up a little bit now. The last, last real, like, push, the last little bubble was... Um, uh, when the B, uh, when the BBC Radio Times, basically the same thing, ran a poll for who the who people wanted as the next doctor, there ten thousand people uh, reply. Not many people wanted female doctors. That, that there was like they suggested a bunch of names: uh, female, male. Female doctors scored very badly. They got two spots in the top ten, um, which eighty <laughs> percent. You know, people said, nah, not so much." Uh, who got number one was Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen by a long way. Uh, and then the media took that and they started running with it, they, which is great news because maybe some some idiot suit somewhere wants to make himself look good and they see this survey and they see uh, Sheen, hashtag Sheen for 14 trending and please use that hashtag. Started by Noel over at the Tardis Zone, I believe. If you're not subscribed there, go and subscribe over there. Um, so it, uh, uh, it might actually happen, right? It might actually happen for the stupidest reasons that we just... They think we they think we want it, which we actually do. So that's all a bit bizarre. So anyway, but this uh, a glut of new, of articles is finally finally drying up and finally uh, uh, catching up with it. This is one of the ones I really wanted to get to for a long time. Cause it's freaking hilarious it's from Denner Geek. Uh, Denner Geek, which I remember I used to quite like, but this is clear, clearly they've gone. I, I, there's a reason I haven't read it for a few years. It's gone off in its own wibbly wobbly direction, and they got this hilarious article about what they would like to see in future Doctor Who, and it really. Truly, truly hilarious. Uh, uh, so you know, uh, uh, I, I, I am apt to 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 have a bit of a chuckle <laughs> every now and again. You know, I do like to laugh at the insanity of the world. Uh, why, why not? Uh, we'll read it together. We'll read it together, and uh, 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 maybe, maybe we, we we will have a laugh. It's 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 hilarious. It really is genuinely hilarious. Before we get it, can you hit the like button? Freaking awesome! Love it. And you hit the share button. Even awesome. Well, thank you very much. I really am very pleased to everybody who, sh who sh shares my content. Thank you very much. But subscribe that's really helpful thank you very much for everybody who hits the subscribe button again with 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 the uh, uh, massive news of uh, Chibnall Whitaker's departure my channel uh, uh, experienced a bit of growth so thank you everybody for, thank you everybody who uh, uh, um, who joined if you're subscribed please make sure you're still subscribed YouTube is not a fan okay YouTube is not a fan I, I look the next video I'm, I'm doing is called uh, Revenge of the Sis uh, CIS <laughs> talking about that uh, Star Wars uh, uh, shopkeeper, Vietnam vet shopkeeper, uh, 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 who was harassed by a crazy trans person. By the looks of it, I'm not. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of on the side of of the Vietnam vet now, as that's why YouTube doesn't like me much. So they do take people off every freaking day. I would love to see what my subscribers would be like. Uh, my subscriber numbers would be like if they. If they treated me like one of the, the the friendly channels, right? I mean, like, I'd love to have a look at that parallel world. Wouldn't that be fascinating? So like, share, subscribe, comment. Comment's very helpful. It, it look, it, it uses the algorithm against them, baby. And you'll be super nice. I'm working on, on fulfilling my Indiegogo. Let me just show you this. Uh, it's over here. Still available. Send the videos. Oh, man. Man, I've been working on this a lot, a lot. I thought there was nothing to do to get this to print. Uh, then I sent it to the printer. They said, "Oh, you can make this little tweak, and it will, and it will yeah, make, it will fit our, our template much, yeah, much, much better." Um, 
So I'm like, yeah, okay. And it means I've got to do like a two or three minute thing per page. There's a lot of pages, okay? There's a lot of pages. I'm nearly done with the uh, the first book. And sorry, I have no, I haven't told you what this is. This is a, uh, for biblical Bible stories, atheist, crazy, rationalist, rogues. It's a, uh, um, uh, as I said, 220, 220 sodding pages long. <sighs> 220 pages long, uh, and uh, it's a very, very biblically accurate. Uh, uh, yeah, you've got sort of stories in that you will probably recognize. It's not preaching anyway, not trying to convince you to do anything. Uh, and then we got this one, the Imperium, a love letter to Telefans in the 1960s. Uh, yeah, actually, I would uh, uh, describe the difference between these books as kind of like, uh, and I, again, I'm not putting myself in this league at all. Alan Moore would sometimes do like you know, his serious work from hell, V Vendor, whatever. Uh, uh, and then he'll do his like jobbing fun work, which is, you know, spawn. <laughs> so, so this is more the fun book, right? So this is a love letter to Telly Fantasy of the 1960s. Uh, James Bond, Emma Pill with Doctor Who, Monkey in the Space Suit, The Black Slab from 2001, Bit of Prisoner, Bit of uh, uh, Thunderbird. It's all thrown in. Oh, the Thunderbird pages are great. Okay, I, actually, I'm really looking forward to just moving on with like this re uh, uh, this tweak that I'm doing so I can get so I can get those Thunderbird pages uh, that Dominic just Dominic Ratchet did the art that's freaking gorgeous and and get uh, get get them lettered and ready to roll. I'm thinking I'm still thinking it's Wednesday. If I can put in another 10, 15 hours, we we, we can get, and I think I can, I don't know. It, is, it depends how much sleep I need. I mean, honestly, I was going last night till I, I literally fell asleep. Okay, but I, I, I want to get this fulfilled. I got my, my, my next book is just ready to go. And man, I've the trailer for it looks awesome. Looks like, I haven't seen it yet, but it looks like it's going to be awesome. Uh, oh yeah, so you also get a bunch of extras. I think you're only getting extras on if you back this campaign. Things like this, the poster of Noble Savages, lovely Leela, and uh, Racco World from uh, uh, 1 million years BC, the For the Male Gaze. You've seen it all. I, you know what? I, I, I talk about this stuff all the time. Go check it out. It's in the video notes. It's freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. Uh, uh, also freaking awesome, the, the, this utter bollocks. <laughs> okay, this other... I, and I use the word utter bollocks in the, yeah, the proper science fiction. Uh, not, sci not science fiction, the, the proper a science scientific term this is utter bollocks okay doctor who season 14 wish list what we'd like to see uh, uh well we're seeing already okay what would i like to see um look, i like michael sheen i like michael sheen a lot uh um and people are saying let's get something totally different I look, sally wainwright sounds like she'll be great uh even though i'm kind of nervous like i just want it to be in safe hands right um so i i, I for me, if I if I got my my if my my wish list, it'll be a Toby Whithouse showrunner, with I don't know um, a a good actor as a doctor. I mean, I would love to see Michael Sheen. Obviously, I wouldn't mind seeing the bloke who played uh, Narak from that piece of crap Star Trek Picard series. Uh, I thought he was good. I thought he would be a great. Doctor. See, I would like it to be a a, you know, a dishy man. That's who I would like to play the doctor. A dishy, charismatic man. It seems that works the best, right? It does, doesn't it? It seems that like you know, little boys have heroes they can look up to, you know, masculine heroes being masculine, and yet still not being like thuggish, yeah, because he's a doctor. He thinks his way out problems. He loves peace, even though he's always with the military. Don't, 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 don't worry about that. But like, yeah, you know, have a have a man, uh, and if he's a dishy man, a dishy good looking man. Often, often the ladies kind of like Doctor Who too. You know, it does, that doesn't hurt the viewing figures. Uh, and I would, really, I would like Doctor Who to be good and successful. That's what I really, as opposed to what it is now, which is bad and unsuccessful. Which I, I just think is a bad combination. I don't know. BBC's uh, 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 up until you know, a couple of weeks ago seemed totally happy with it, right? Totally, totally uh, uh, thrilled with it. Uh, so after he leaves, uh, uh, Jodie Weaver leaves. Uh, what's on the fan wish list for the show's future? Uh, I don't think they're pulling from a representative sample of fandom here. I think they're pulling from the Twitter crazes. Why do I think that? Because I've read some of it. Uh, with the recent announcement at the start, uh, Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall will be the party doctor. Yes! Every time I hear it, I say, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Um, following the next season, we have confirmation that season 14, we have confirmation that season 14 will uh, be yet another opportunity to regenerate uh, the long-running science fiction show. Uh, assuming there is a season 14, right? I mean, it, it's all dependent on international partners. Uh, um, what kind of season 14? I mean, the uh, there's a very small group of fanatical fans 
well, I wouldn't say fans, who fanatically love this era of Doctor Who. I don't think they like this era of Doctor Who. I think they like, you know, the uh, Jodie Whittaker being female. And, and uh, I, I think they feel that they're breaking the glass ceiling, right? They think they feel they're doing something incredible by having a woman be Doctor Who because now people can look at women as if they are human beings, right? Or, what, or whatever insanity is going through their head. That, and that's really what they think. They think, oh, we're going to re-educate children that women are scientists. Really? Nobody has a problem, okay? No, I mean, no, some do, but most people do not have a problem with it, with, with the idea. I, 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 yeah, I think most people have a problem with the female Doctor Who now because it was just so bad. They did it. They did a really horrendously bad job with it. I, you know, I was, uh, I saw it on Facebook last night. Somebody, um, some a, 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 a fan of fan of the current era. Uh, saying how much he didn't like how antagonistic people who didn't like the era were towards them, uh, 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 and they made them feel bad and made them feel stupid for it. Which you know they shouldn't be. Honestly, I I I, I don't understand why anybody who likes Doctor Who would like this. This seems to be the antithesis of Doctor Who. But like I I, I, I like I like crap. <laughs> I, mean, what, I, I watched Hell's Kitchen last night. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I like crap. Everybody likes crap. It's okay to like crap. And even if you think it's good, my wife watches this show. Oh God, I hate it so much. Oh, all that. The way my wife watch shows, she watch she watch she she binge. She can't do anything without like watching it non-stop. She doesn't have a variety, but she gets the show. She gets the show, and she watches it and watches it and watches it. And so like makes me just after three weeks just. Absolutely hate it. The good doctor, I call it a, a, a retard doctor. It's about about a guy with uh, autism who's a doctor. The guy playing him is, is, is isn't a good actor. He doesn't sound like I I I'm I'm no autistic people. None of them sound like oh, I am a doctor. I mean, have you ever seen this? Show? It is awful. I freaking hate it. I hate it with every five might be. And again, that's good. My wife plays it whenever she's watching TV. She's always watching the good. Oh. Yes, we're getting you're getting me on a little tangent right now. But the point is, it's like I, it's okay to like crap. It's okay to like it, it, people like the stuff they like, and it's cool. It's cool. So I I, I replied to them that, uh, uh, and I don't know why. I said, listen, I think the problem is the the antagonism, and they do get people talking from outside the fence talking down to them. That's that, that's true. But I think the antagonism was really cool when uh, Jodie Whittaker started as as uh, as Doctor Who. And it wasn't very good, right? Well, firstly, she was, she was very condescending. I don't think she was inside. I think she was more condescending. Don't be afraid of my gender. No, Nobody was afraid of it. We were just afraid that you would do what you did, which is make garbage. I mean, real garbage. It's boring. It's preachy, in my opinion. In my opinion. And, you know, she's a... Brainless conformist, and I oh, I just hate that. I just hate that in people in general, least of all Doctor Who. Um, so yeah, yeah, but it, going in, we all wanted to like it. We, yeah, everybody, I think most people wanted to like it and assumed it was be, be it would be good, but you know, when it started not being good, I think Arachnids in the UK was when, when people first went, Oh, that's and I even gave that one a pass, right? Because I'm like, Yeah, see what they do next week. Maybe they maybe they'll put pull, uh, uh, pull it together. Everybody gets a bad episode. No, it was awful. Uh, um, but, you know, it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> in Doctor Who... Uh, 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 Doctor Who has just been not very good. <laughs> Can I, I don't know how else to tell you. It just hasn't been very good uh, from a... a uh, so, so, you know, it said when it started, started, it wasn't very good and people started having criticism about it. They were called bigots and sexists and misogynists. Uh, uh, and then this woman replied... Well, maybe all the criticisms were misogynistic. Maybe, oh no, may, you know, how terrible for her to defend herself from misogyny. I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know why it's misogynistic to say I think her acting is appalling. Uh, which I do, I think it's absolutely important. People say, well, it wasn't Jenny Whittaker's fault. Yes, it was. It was her fault as well as Chris Chidmore. Nobody held a gun to her head and made her act out those scripts, okay? She read the scripts. She must have read the scripts because she said the scripts, right? So, so unless you're saying she has no mental capacity at all, the scripts went through her mind and out her mouth. It's as much her fault as anybody else. If I, I, other people have been saying, like, no, I'm not going to do this. Right? I, 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 it, well, it could have been like Mark Hamill with The Last Jedi. Uh, or was, I think, uh, yeah, The Last Jedi was like, well, this isn't like Luke Skywalker, but they did just back up a truck full of money into my living room. So, ah, swings and roundabouts, right? Swings and roundabouts. Fine. Uh, with the reason they're leaving next season, we have confirmation. So do we know there's going to be a season 14? That's the question. Do we know there's going to be a season 14? No. 
We have no production team in place. Nothing's been confirmed. It's, I, I think it's all dependent on there being international partners and uh, uh, if they're going to... Uh, um, they need to decide. Are they going to make Doctor Who that people want or are they going to make Doctor Who that they want to tell people that they want? I think it's a bit of a power struggle. It, 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 I think it's basically between Piers Wenger and... Uh, what's the name? Tim Ritchie, the guy, the, uh, the, the uh, director general. And it seems like BBC Studios has much more of a say in Doctor Who now. They seem to be a co-production between BBC and BBC Studios, which I think makes uh, uh, Piers Wenger less powerful. But I don't know. I don't know. They, they, a lot of these things uh, uh, could... Um, uh, uh, you know, a lot of these terrorizers just could come to pass. They could just say, well, they didn't like Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall, but let's give it another go. Let's give it another go and try it again. Maybe they'll like it this time. We'll just, it was just, I don't know, and, and it happens that like, that's what they did with comic books. That's what they've done with Star Trek. Uh, uh, it looks like that's what they're going to do with Star Wars. I don't know. I don't know. Although I did quite enjoy The Bad Batch. I really should do, do a, a, a review of that. Uh, okay, I'm still on the first line. Okay, I've, I've waffled a bit on this one. Uh, I'm going to be leaving. Uh, we're going to be regenerate long range show. Fine. In that spirit, we reached out to a number of Doctor Who viewers amongst our writers. Okay, this is why your website is bullcrap, right? Uh, uh, try re reaching out to the actual fans around, around, to get their personal fan perspectives on what they would like to see in the next iteration of Doctor Who. Here's what they came up with. Add your own wish list items below. Make the Doctor a bit of a bastard. Well, you always complained about that with Capaldi, right? And, and I think actually for, with good reason. I think the juxtaposition, the Matt Smith, who was just so loving and, and, and inspiring, and Capaldi, who was very cold and very, very alien, especially at first when he was scared. And he, that actually, his performance has always been fantastic. You can tell how scared he was at first uh, and how he was covering it. He's just a very, very good layer performance. Okay, my number one wish list item for season 14, if it ever happens, is a Doctor to be a bit of a bastard. Uh, Stephen Moffat had his flaws, but one thing I loved about his interpretation was, the, uh, was what the Doctor is. The way Moffat sees the Doctor is there is a vast alien god full of loneliness, grief, rage that can burn out suns. That's kind of Rusty Davis, I think, more than uh, Stephen Moffat. I think Rusty Davis kind of developed that. I mean, do you remember... Uh, what was it season three, the Martha season? There was a great, uh, there was a great trailer uh, uh, based around human nature, family of blood, where when when they describe the Doctor basically as that, right? Basically as like a a, a a powerful alien, ancient god, full of loneliness, grief, and rage that can burn out, uh, uh, burn out suns. But it also lives very much in the moment, right? Uh, and when he meets humans, he pretends to be this fictional character called the Doctor, who is half an idiot, half superhero. Of course, of course I think Moffat would also tell you that, uh, though the Doctor might not know it, if you scratch the surface of the alien god uh, behind the mask, you'll find that deep down uh, it is part idiot, part superhero. Yeah, I mean, I kind of developed that with the Sylvester McCoy era, which I'm really, I'm really enjoying season 24. I'm doing the. Uh, I'm re watching the Blu-ray of it now. I'm really. I'm surprised how much I'm enjoying it, uh, which is a lot, right? I'm really. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, you know, a hell of a lot. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, Sylvester McCoy was the one who who essentially uh, um, uh, developed the idea that uh, he like he acted like he was a a remote alien, you know, god. I, I hate using that word god because I think there's only one god. You can, if you have something infinite, nothing can be be uh, uh, um, separate from that. But. Uh, um, uh, 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 he would pretend to be this all power thing. Well, he really, uh, he was really busking and didn't really know. He knew a lot, but he was pretty, he was, he was all a front, right? Um, so yeah, well, well, you would like Doctor Who to be more like Doctor Who, not like a, a sad Andy Pandy, uh, uh, doll or like, yeah, grilling moron. Uh, the Doctor is your best friend, and that's important, but also at times uh, the mask slips. Uh, yeah, I do think he absolutely adored spending time with the companion. I'm thinking Tom Baker with Sarah Jane Smith. Like, it, you can see how much... Uh, I, well, at least that's the way Tom Baker played it, and Liz Sladen played it. Like, just this real, real love of one another, right? They And they, it was a great friendship. It was just a fantastic friendship. Um, yeah, it, it just... It, it, and, and this current iteration with the fam it just doesn't seem real at all i i is it because jodie whittaker's not a good actress or is it that she doesn't believe in the role 
and she's not able to put any authenticity into it. Although she did, the, I think she did the best she can. Uh, the Doctor should be a bit scary as well as as well as wonderful. I don't think Jodie Whittaker had much chance to show that side of the character. Excuse me, she had plenty of chance. She could have done. It could have been anything she wanted it to be. Really, I mean, she she Chibnall would have done whatever she said because Chibnall can't say no to to anybody on the progressive stack. He can't edit anybody. He can't say no to them. Uh, 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 she could have done it, and she could have watched Doctor Who, right? Go crazy. And you know, uh, okay, going into it, going in it, season season eleven. You don't watch any Doctor Who, so you want to have a fresh interpretation. But it didn't go down very well, right? The, the ratings were like like that, right? Didn't go down very well at all. So maybe in between season 11, 12, take a couple of days, watch a few episodes of Doctor Who. But you know what? The reason I think she didn't do that is because she doesn't like it. She thinks it's a silly t a silly children's TV show. Uh, uh, but if she'd done that, she might have got the through line of the character. And she would have... Uh, she had every chance. I can't stand this. Thing. She never had a chance. She had more chance than I think anybody has ever bloody had in their lives. Anybody lives? She had more chance than I think any other actor ever had in the role, right? Um, but, 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 had much of a chance to show that song. She's uh, kind and clever and brave. She's not kind. She's not kind. Yeah, you know, no. She likes to pretend she's kind. Show she's kind. She likes a virtue signal. Uh, 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 but she's not kind. Do you remember when? Uh, and this is the problem of watching all, all of her garbage because I know it all now. Uh, um, the, in the uh, well, the Dalek one, the the first Dalek one re resolution. Uh, Ryan's uh, estranged father shows up. Uh, Ryan's one of the, but Ryan is the black companion, which is basically the, how how they how they cast it. I'm the black one. I'm I'm the white one. I'm the I'm the uh, uh, Muslim one, right? Uh, and, and I'm the doctor. Uh, uh, the try, yeah, but yeah, the, he's he's a strange father turns up. Now, um, Bradley Walsh's character, uh, what's his name? I can't. I do remember Bradley Walsh. Anyway, his character uh, uh, feels very close to Ryan. Feels like a grandfather to Ryan. And so he, he knows how important having a father is for Ryan, right? And he hates Ryan's father. He hates Ryan's father completely. Uh, uh, and But because of his love and kindness, genuine kindness, he pushes his personal animosity aside uh, uh, so Ryan can have this relationship, which is very, very necessary for him. Uh, the Doctor isn't so kind, right? She isn't so kind. She's not clever. Uh, what, what, can, can you please show me where she was clever, where she was convincingly clever? The one scene, because I'm not thinking, I can't think of one. I'm sorry, and I've seen it all. She's not been clever. She's been stupid a lot of the time. E, what's going on? I don't understand. Oh, E, what's that? Yeah, she's been stupid. She hasn't been clever. Uh, brave, again, when was she brave? She's only brave when people can stand around and give give her applause. I mean, that was that the witch finders where he leaps in to save the woman being drowned as a witch. I get the feeling this Doctor wouldn't have done that if there wasn't an audience, right? That And that's how they're playing it. Uh, so not brave. When she been heroic? Again, that Dalek episode, Resolution, that the... Uh, um, uh, uh, it, you know, it was one Dalek, one Dalek uh, uh, that was broken into three pieces. Capaldi, Capaldi's Doctor, would have taken care about that while he's walking around the TARDIS console in between sips of tea. Glowering at the console, pressing out the buttons. She couldn't even do it. It took her, uh, her entire fam, a bunch of other people, and a microwave to throw it out the TARDIS. Right, throw it out the TARDIS, and uh, and she she opened the doors. Uh, wasn't that impressive? Right, not that not that heroic. So okay, she's she's not been kind. She's not been clever. She's not been brave, and she's not been 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 heroic. And again, I'm not saying this because she has a vagina. I'm saying this because, objectively speaking, she's not been brave, she's not been clever, she's not been heroic, right? And she's not been kind. Um, she should get to uh, bluster and be a massive egotist. She does! I, I, uh, what was it? Uh, timeless children. Timeless children. She takes, she takes a few minutes, right, to stop and have everybody say, Oh, Doctor, you're so wonderful. You're the best. Well, she's going to sacrifice herself to... Uh, for whatever bollocks it was, to blow up Gallifrey to get rid of the, the cyber laws. And they're like, oh, Doctor, you're the bestest ever. Oh, you're the... And then, hey, hey, you're right. I am. I am the bestest ever. Oh, I'm so brave and studying me. Aye. And she puts him into a TARDIS and sends him back to wherever it was, Sheffield. 
um, and then she goes to uh, sacrifice herself and meets meets an old geezer from Game of Thrones, and he says, "Oh, I'll do it for you." And she's like, "Oh, hey, hey up, Chuck! You can you can kill yourself for me then." Okay, and that's after she stood around and go, "Oh." I'm the bravest ever. Yeah, that's wonderful, darling. Wonderful. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what show you're watching, uh, 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 but uh, she's a massive egotist uh, and uh, and looked like an actual idiot. Really? Oh, yeah, let me read this sentence again, okay? Uh, <laughs> but she should also get to bluster and be a massive egotist and look like an actual idiot. When has that not happened? That's every freaking episode. Are you out of your bloody mind? What? I like what? Uh, <laughs> I hope our successor does get that, says Chris Varnell. Oh, Chris, mate. Chris, come on my channel. Please. Oh, I want to talk to you. Okay, let's see the next one. Okay, the next one is pure gold. Pure gold. Vinay Patel as showrunner. He's written a few bad episodes. <laughs> let's put it in a second. Let's have a look. One second. Let's go over here. Ooh, Vinay Patel. Let's open a new window. Vinay Patel. Doctor. Because I think his episodes were reasonably bad, right? Let's see. Wikipedia. Let's see what, what episodes he's done. Uh, look, look at this massive career. Um... Uh, uh, was it Honor Killing Drama, Murdered by My Father? Well, that sounds cheery. That sounds cheery. Good karma. Uh, the sick there. Demons of the Punjab. Oh, God, that was boring. That was just boring, mate. Demons of the Punjab and uh, Fugitive of the Jadoon, which was co-written by Chibnall. Uh, and pe and it was, people liked that, even though it wasn't very good. I think it's probably one of the better episodes. I want to say one of the better episodes of the season, but it was still garbage because it was in the season. Um, yeah, I think like he sounds like a terrible idea. Well, hey, hey, let let let's let's hit let's hear them uh, make the argument. I don't know if he wants a job. He wants a job, okay? He wants a job. It's not he would suck a dick for the job. He would suck a golf ball through a hose uh, for the job, okay? He wants the job. Vinny Patel is my wish list choice for the next showrunner, Doctor Who. Patel, two episodes are not only among the most successful uh, episodes in recent history. Yes, but the one, some of the least successful of all time. Okay. Do I have to look up the the, uh, the viewing figures? <sighs> really? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, on a second. I think I have the... Uh, thing, I think I've got uh, Fugitive of the Jadoons figures over here. That was the one with... Captain Jack was in that one. That got a bit of a bump, I think. Yeah, one second. I'm just... Uh, I'm not opening up the phone. Just have a quick look. Uh, where is it? Fugitive of the Jadoon... 5.57. Okay, so that's uh, that's consolidated. That's under pretty much. Uh, that's under. That's one of the lowest rated episodes of all time. The only episodes lower rated than that were um, the Lie of the Land, which I quite like. That got 5.29. Uh, 5.54 is about the same. Empress of Mars. 5.12 got Eaters of Light. 5.3. Uh, is world enough in time and 5.6 okay so that's it so it was like it was one two three four four and then we got two episodes of battlefield right um from 89 so it was in the bottom 10 viewed episodes of all time okay so that, that so yeah what's the most successful in the bottom 10 viewed of episodes of all time okay that that that's not successful that's not successful uh, everything's relative, baby, I guess. Um, but succeeded in different ways. Yeah, they, uh, I, um, listen, I get, well, yeah, let's see, let's see what they have to say before I rip it apart. Uh, with Caesar then, believe the Pond, and Pidel demonstrate he's able to work outside the traditional Doctor Who formula and give us a historical episode that challenges colo uh, the colonialist framework arguably written into the DNA of the show. There you go. The colonialist framework arguably written into the DNA of the show. 
I don't trust Vinay Patel or your view on history, right? You people are absolutely insane. You're the same people that say, uh, think like, you know, if you have a vagina, for example, that doesn't necessarily have to be female. But if you do have a, a vagina, you are always on the progressive stack. I mean, there's so many contradictions. Uh, um, yeah, I, I just don't. You, I mean, you're the type of people who will call Israel the uh, the the you know the complete aggressors in the Israel-Palestinian conflict and blame Jews for everything, right? That's exactly who you are. Don't pretend that's not who you are. Um, so I don't really trust your, your view of history. And frankly, that wasn't the problem with the, the episode. The problem with the episode was, it was boring. It was dull. It didn't have a threat. The aliens were, it did, everything about it was boring. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, the Punjab, uh, uh, framework of DNA of Doctor Who. So, yeah, so she says she doesn't like Doctor Who. I like this, uh, this episode of Doctor Who you did because it wasn't like Doctor Who. Okay. With season, um, well, Future of the Jadoon, but that was asked to incorporate many, many different plot elements into a single episode without losing focus or the heart of the story. And he pulls it off. Um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to give him that one. Yeah, yeah, I think it, I, I haven't really watched it. But it, 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 of the episodes of season 12, I think it's one of the ones that held together most like an episode. It was also garbage, right? It was also garbage. Uh, uh, but at least, at least, again, one of the, 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 in the bottom 10 rated episodes of all time. Of all, of, now, over, well, 56 years at the time? Uh, yeah, that's pretty bad, right? That's pretty bad. Um, but yeah, okay, that he did a semi-competent job. Okay, I that, but I guess in this se season of Doctor Who, uh, this era of Doctor Who, that that's something that's got got to be lauded, right? Uh, Doctor Who has made a big deal about recent strides in reputation, both in front and behind the camera, and the depiction roles uh, for good reasons. But we have never had a person of color, uh, never had a person of color in the most creative, influential role of all. How does that matter? Like, I don't understand. How does that matter? Like, I, I, why is everything, everything viewed through the prism of race? How do you differentiate yourself? Was it a uh, KT Burt? How do you differentiate yourself from any other races throughout time that views everything through, uh, through the, uh, the prism of skin color? You know, like, I used to listen to Howard Stern uh, and uh, back in the day, 20 years ago. And they used to have this uh, KKK guy on, uh, da Daniel Carver. And it'll, it'll be fascinating to hear their philosophy. It's indistinguishable from this. Everything was about skin color, right? It, 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 everything was based upon it. I, 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 it seems indistinguishable. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, um, I'm not opposed to there being a black show. And I, what about uh, a bit... Bit of Noel Clark. Would you like that? Would you like a bit of Noel Clark as showrunner? How about Noel Clark as showrunner and, uh, and and Doctor? Would you like that? Oh no, he, he's cancelled. Um, okay. So basically she's saying it's all because of skin colour because she's a massive racist. The job of showrunner is a much larger one than the uh, uh, job of episodic writer encompassing produ uh, uh, producer responsibilities in addition to writing choices. And I would love to see what Bedell could, could do with it. He, I honestly... I just don't think he's qualified, right? I, it's like, now, Sally right, Wainwright, overqualified, completely qualified, right? No problem. Um, but is that basically you're saying, I, I like his skin color and I want him to write Doctor Who to, because he did it like it wasn't like Doctor Who. This is why, this is why the ratings are in the toilet, right? 100% why. Why not just make Doctor Who be like Doctor Who? Wouldn't that be a good idea? Uh, or if he doesn't want the job as showrunner, find him a good non-writing executive producer to support him in the role uh, of head writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Katie Burke, you're a racist. Okay, I think you're a racist. More solo Doctor episodes. Okay. Uh, it's rare to find the Doctor alone, but some new who have memorable episodes. Midnight Waters of Mars, The Lodger, uh, Heaven Sent, Spring to Mind. Okay, fine. We're on, we're on the same page so far, darling. We're doing good. Uh, have has uh, have had a, a conspicuous lack uh, of of companions. The these companion light episodes run the gauntlet from comedic to exceedingly dark. But the be uh, but all of them benefit from the increased sto uh, storytelling pace uh, created when the Doctor flies solo. 
Uh, yeah, but yeah, again, again, that that can only happen when you've got somebody who's good in the role, right? Who can pull off the role. Whitaker can't do it. That's what I think. That's why she has so many. One of the reasons she has so many companions because she's just weak. She's a very weak in the role. Uh, uh, over. Kind of serve an important function, Doctor. They they are the audience stand-ins who interpret que interpret question and ultimately humanize the Doctor. Taking them uh, taking them away uh, forces both writers to uh, uh, taking away forces uh, both writers and viewers to relearn who the Doctor is through the eyes of strangers. No companions also. Uh, from a practical standpoint, means fewer obligatory characters to juggle in the new Who's type 45 minute runtime. Do you remember when they said, Oh, yeah, we got less episodes, but we're gonna go longer, they're gonna be an hour long each? And they weren't, it was one of the many things that uh, he was wrong about or lied about. One of the two, so yeah, you know, wh wh however you want to describe it. Uh, the writers are free to spend more time on uh, to on the one off cast uh, of, of uh, uh, given episodes. Investing us in the mundane struggles of an ordinary bloke who resembles his uh, who resembles his couch or illuminating the history of the shuttle of Taurus before it is ripped away. So listen, something you've got to remember, the reason we had these great solo episodes was because they made more episodes of Doctor Who and there just wasn't physically enough time to get everybody in. <laughs> like to to uh, to fil to film them all. Well so they had to have like a Doctor Light episode and a companion like the that's essentially what, and you get, I always think when you put re writing restrictions onto people, you get, that's when you get gold. That's when you get real, real gold. Um, which, yeah, we, uh, uh, what's, what's that first Angels episode? Oh, man. I'm just thinking uh, Flesh and Stone, but that was the last one. It was... Blink! Oh man, wow! I'm glad I remember that. But you do when you when you got you got real real in you know, innovation on that. I I like Love of Monsters. I do. I do. Not many people that I really enjoy it. I like the innovation of it. Um, but Jodie Whittaker can't, can't do this. This is this is uh, you know surrounded by companions. She can't do it. Let alone on her own. It's outside of her wheelhouse. Um, Okay, uh, uh, guy, uh, guy resembles a boat ripped away. Of course, Doctor Who with the explanation wouldn't be Doctor Who, but sometimes companion light episodes is the perfect way to uh, remind us uh, why uh, why we keep watching. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. I think she says she wants a good actor and writer. <laughs> okay, so we're we're on board. Uh, give Big Finish a crack of the whip. So I'm going to say no to this actually. Um, I uh, Big Finish crack of the whip is is essentially uh, Nick Briggs uh, as being showrunner. And look, I like Nick Briggs a lot. I like his work a lot. Uh, I uh, I generally think, speaking, uh, uh, will always always rely on him. Right? I think he he delivers far often than he doesn't. Uh, I particularly like his uh, uh, his his original thing. It was a Human Frontier. I think and I, it was put back. Second series was put back at like six months a year, which I was glad about because I really like it. It was a generally good thing. Um, Dark Eyes in the box sets with uh, Paul Morgan was, was basically took the attitude of what would I do as showrunner, and and the thing is, um, it was good. It, it, it they're they're good, and also the the recent Christopher Eccleston box set was very good, which he he which he did uh, uh, all three episodes on. Uh, it's not populist enough, right? It's not. Uh, it it it's written for sci-fi fans. It's written for fans of Doctor Who. Um, and it's written more for him, and he's he's a much more cerebral um, writer. He he writes quieter stuff. He writes things that aren't like big flashy explosions. He, he can do the big flashy explosions too, but but uh, uh, mostly his his works more cerebral. So uh, I I I I think you need a bit more crowd pleasing uh, uh, with Doctor Who. I, I yeah, which I think would love to see happen. Um, they may have begun the contrib uh, uh, contrib uh, contributions to Doctor Who canon with a series of niche, uh, niche audio adventures during the show's wilderness series, but they big finish are the linchpins in the show's expanded universe. They they are uh, 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 the brand leaders now. I mean, that, they are absolutely pe the, the, the people pushing the brand forward. Uh, uh, Chibnall and crew seem that like they're there through contractual obligation, not much more. Uh, playing a pivotal role in the 2020s ambition multimedia epic Time Lord Victorious. Oh, well, that was a dud, and they were not happy with it either. Uh, and squeezing into their uh, garden sheds to keep producing content during the pandemic, the team have repeatedly uh, uh, proven they've got the skill and imagination to make most of all uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, the, yeah, that, that imagination to make the most of 
all the time and space uh, all the time and space has to offer. Fair point, right? All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, I agree with that. What I, honestly, what I would like to see them do is in, uh, in twenty sixty three do a, an animated series called Doctor Who Legends or something like that, uh, and have Big Finish basically produce it, right? And don't do the crappy. Uh, uh, reconstruction animation, do real animation. I think it'll be huge. I think it'll do very, very well. Uh, just a matter of what Big Finish can do if they were handed the reins uh, to run the adventures you could actually see. Whether it took the form of a fresh start with the next doctor, next official doctor, or a selection, or uh, or a selection box of old regenerations romping across reality. Into uh, basically what I'm saying, the uh, the palate cleansing series of new writers gives. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, giving it all on Saturday night telly before the regular format could resume uh, could be just the thing to re uh, reignite interest in, of fans, uh, uh, fans whose attention have waned in recent years. Also, they got uh, Exxon's phone number. Just saying, yeah, listen, it's uh, a boy, they could just add for this Playmobil the uh, Enterprise. That's five hundred bloody dollars. It's crazy. Um, uh, sorry, I, I just got taken take off by, by 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 that that aside. Um, yeah, listen. The reason uh, uh, um, interest is waning is because of the current era. So okay, there. So uh, Chris, Chris Allcock, uh, uh, you weren't Allcock, mate. Okay, this was this was pretty good. This was pretty good. Okay, who else we got? N more non UK episode settings. Um, I would like season 24 to use the TARDIS to see the uh, uh, Earth past present beyond the UK. It would be interesting to have a whole era like set in New Orleans, for example, right? Just to the like, wouldn't that be interesting? Like the way way they they had it set in unit, you know, it, it, something like that. In the classic era, uh, many episodes, both uh, mo modern and period, were set uh, in the UK purely out of budget necessity, but. Uh, but in addition to the early matter that the series teach children about the past, uh, uh, also meant a uh, heavy focus on classic Who to cover many areas of U UK history. Modern Doctor Who has filmed episodes uh, or scenes in South Africa, New York, Spain, and Utah. And what would they film in Utah? Was that the modern? Was was, was that the Jodie years? I think so. Because I think. I, oh no, Utah. That will be the Matt Smith thing with the. Um, yeah, the cowboy hat, the monuments. Oh, that was cool. Uh, there's so much. Uh, there's so much unexplored uh, um, uh, history, right? For alien meddling outside, uh, meddling outside the UK, especially including Asia, Africa, uh, Central and so uh, Central and South America. Honestly, I think that's what what books and Big Finish were really for. But that was in the age where we had books. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, interest is, is is so waned now. Not you know, not many people are that are that interested. Uh, not enough to to support monthly books, which is tragic. Uh, the series has mentioned several um, uh, several alien, uh, worldwide alien adventures in modern times uh, and the past. And uh, well, why not have the stories that we we uh, wreak havoc in ancient Ni uh, Nigeria? Okay, I mean, yeah, you could you can film a lot of the stuff in the UK though. I have to tell you. Um, why do uh, Clatterman always uh, uh, always appear? In London first and not Tokyo. I, I listen. They wanted to do uh, the Autons in uh, uh, Singapore, was it? Yeah, uh, 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 Robert Holmes wanted to do that. Uh, it was a Yellow Fever and How to Cure It, I believe, because it was was the working title or something that never happened. Uh, if Classic Who can use a soundstage to mimic the Aztec Empire, uh, what excuse does uh, 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 modern uh, modern Doctor Who have with multiple times, uh, multiple times of budget, greater access and reach resources and, and uh, production technology. Hopefully by season fourteen, the uh, most apparent pandemic restrictions will be lifted. It seems like it seems like the pa the pandemic isn't going away, right? It seems like it's not going away. I mean, it seems like it never affected like the elite. So did you did you see the uh, what was it Barack Obama uh, uh, birthday bash? <laughs> okay, let's say about that better. Um, Oh, wait, 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 uh, as they play their technology. Hopefully, by season 14, most of my name will be uh, listed now, uh, allowing international filming to resume. There's so much human history, uh, uh, human history and modern day experiences outside the UK. Fans love reading up uh, on real history and uh, and or modern references to to uh, to plot events. 
the Doctor has seen uh, 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 seen the whole uh, the whole human existence. Doctor Who is overdue for uh, more of this. Amanda Ray Prescott. I, I just think it's not that practical, quite frankly. I, and I think what makes Doctor Who Doctor Who is its Britishness. But I think that, yeah, this is like that. Russell D. Davis really understood. Yeah, he wanted Doctor Who to be very very British when when, when he uh, revived it. Uh, uh, yeah, when he, when he, when uh, when he brought it back, we got London, red London buses because people like the Britishness of it, right? Uh, I like the idea of occasionally going outside, but I think uh, too much focus again in budgetary stuff. I I just think it's a very very British show, and I think it being British is kind of helpful. Uh, going further afield, comic books, co uh, uh, big finish audios and or audios in general. And, and and novels. The TV show, I'm not sure I'm on board with it. Not a terrible idea, just not not uh, not a good idea. Wreck on the Tyler's Children Revelation. Does blimey. I'm su I'm I'm surprised they uh, uh um uh uh had anybody write it. Who, who I'm just trying to find the name of the guy guy wrote. James Andrew. James Andrew, fair there you go. Right, so let's, let's see what he's got to say, because I think we all agree here. I understand why Christian was seduced by the narrative possibilities of the time as children. I understand, too. He wants to make the Doctor less white uh, uh, and less male. That, and that was the entirety of it. Uh, now that we know the Doctor has uh, lived countless, li uh, countless more lives than 13-ish, uh, we come to accept many of the uh, them uh, uh, hidden behind a mind lock following the surf, uh, following service to a secret time of sex. There exists the tantalizing prospect of uh, a, a hidden doctor lingering just over every, every horizon. It's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. Made the doctor functionally immortal. Boring. Boring, boring idea. If we can see that uh, it was a master for Russell D. David to introduce a time war, an event that colored the first, uh, uh, first uh, the, the modern, uh, modern era doctor in heavy shades of grill, uh, guilt, grit, uh, uh, guilt and grit and regret, then it's tempting to concede that these more recent revelations will serve a similar function. Yeah, listen, Chimnall, Chimnall's not a good writer. Basically, the bottom line, he's not a good writer. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He likes to rip off what other things, and do, he does it badly because he's not a good writer. Right? It, it, this is played pretty much like bad karaoke Doctor Who. Um, and then it's tempting to the uh, uh, more, more recently to have the same function that the Doctor's seismic uh reckoning of their uh of the sense of, of of themselves will unlock uh reservoirs of uh, dramatic tension except well the old adage is, is uh if anything the old adage that uh says that if anything can be anything then nothing means anything that's exactly true and i think that applies here uh a tweak is fine but the time as children is a big uh is a bite too big a cheat a rug pull for the audience uh, uh, and character both. I agree. Red Red Dwarf two plays hard and loose with canon, but it's a, it's it, it's a, it's got a shorter legacy, and it's a um, it's a comedy show, right? But if co creators Grant uh, uh, Grant and Naylor had decided to continue the saga of with the uh, mind vending bits of back to reality cemented as fact, Red, Red Dwarf uh, wouldn't have been Red Dwarf anymore. We can only hope the future children, or even Christian himself, is clever enough to wreck on the events of the Timeless Children uh, as uh, nothing more than a, a cunning malfeasance of the Master. Jamie Andrew, yes, Jamie Andrew, well, finally, finally, a voice of sense, a voice of sense amongst the uh, 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 gibbering insanity. Vinay Patel is show life. Will you shut up? That, that's just insane. That is just insane. Uh, um, yeah, what, will we see any of these things for season four? No. No, no, no. Honestly, most likely thing right now is uh, 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 Michael Sheen, right? I mean, as of today, it's uh, August 11th is when I'm recording it. As of today, most likely thing is, but it is, is uh, uh, not Martin Sheen. <laughs> I mean, uh, Michael Sheen. That, uh, 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 um, but, and I'm, I, that's kind of unlikely. What, what does the future hold for Doctor Who, right? What does the future hold? Nobody freaking knows, right? Nobody knows. Uh, 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 we can say with some uh, confidence uh, that the next six episodes are probably going to be bad, as will be the three specials that follow it. Uh, uh, and, and the only reason anyone can have any confidence in that is everything they've done up until now has been pretty bad. So, you know, I think it's a reasonable inference to make. So there you go. Uh, Denno Geek's uh, 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 stupidest ideas. Dumbest ideas for what they would like to see for season 14 of Doctor Who. If indeed there is a season 14. My name is Sila Beckin. The you the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell. So you are notified when new videos drop.